Hi everyone, my name is Julie and today we're exploring the language of one of the mightiest empire that ever ruled. In a place where now the jungle reclaims sumptuous palaces and temples. Suosede and welcome to the Khmer language. Yes, it is pronounced Khmer, not Khmer. Khmer is the official language of Cambodia. Thus, it is also sometimes called the Cambodian language, and it is the native language for 90% of the country's population, or 14 million people. It is also spoken by 1.3 million people in Thailand and 1 million in Vietnam. Khmer belongs to the Austroasiatic language family, which is predominantly located in Southeast Asia and also in some pockets in India. We don't know for sure where Austroasiatic people originate from, but it is hypothesized that they started spreading from somewhere in southern China or from the Red River Valley in Vietnam. They spread all around mainland Southeast Asia and reached parts of Borneo and Sumatra and also India to the west and were later replaced in some areas by subsequent Austronesian, Sino-Tibetan and Kradai migrations. The successful expansion of the Austronesians was probably due to the invention of rice cultivation. This expansion and the division of the family in branches possibly happened around 4 or 5 thousand years ago. Khmer is part of the Mon Khmer branch together with another big language, Vietnamese. Today Khmer can be split in several dialects that are more or less mutually intelligible. Okay guys, so I want to show you this very cool language learning app Speakly, which is the sponsor of this video and which I personally find very interesting. Did you know that by knowing only 800 words of the most frequently used lemmas in English, you'll be able to understand 75% of the spoken language? And with 3000 most common lemmas, you'll be able to understand TV shows. Well, the creators of Speakly understood that too. That's why Speakly concentrates on teaching you the most common, most useful vocabulary, which means taking you to fluency the fastest way possible. In fact, five times faster than conventional learning methods. The lessons train you speaking, listening, writing, they help you memorize new vocabulary with space repetition system. And you learn the words in the context, which is also very important. There is even music recommendations to help you immerse in the language you're learning. You can set up your study goals and schedule, so the app will help you keep up with your language learning routine. And as we all know, routine is key in this endeavor. Speakly promises you that with 30 minutes a day, you'll get from zero to solid speaking in 3-4 months. So why not give it a try? You can get a 7-day free trial by clicking the link below. And then if you opt for an annual subscription, you get a 60% discount. I really think it's a very nice app based on some proper science, so I'm genuinely recommending it to you. Khmer is an old language with a long traceable history. The first description in Khmer dates from 611 AD. Back then, the language was under a heavy influence of Sanskrit and Pali through Hinduism and Buddhism. Between 550 and 802 AD was the time of the Chenla Empire, which was a confederation of city-states. In 802 AD, King Jayavarman II conquered a lot of land and established the Khmer Empire, which existed until 1431. In its biggest extent, it covered almost the entirety of mainland Southeast Asia. The Khmer Empire is notably famous for Angkor Wat, Built in the 12th century, it is the largest religious complex in the world and the city of Angkor had around 1 million inhabitants at its height and was possibly the biggest city on earth in that period. The development of Khmer language follows these historical events. Linguists divide Khmer into Old Khmer, which lasted until the decline of the Khmer Empire, Middle Khmer, which is characterized by a high amount of Thai loanwords, as the former empire was dominated by Thai kingdoms at the time, and Modern Khmer, which starts with the French colonization in the 19th century and is characterized by the import of French words. Today, the main source in loanwords in Khmer as in any other language in the world, 
is English. By the way, the development of a sister language of Khmer, Vietnamese, was quite different. It was mostly influenced by Chinese and Austronesian languages. Khmer people have easier time understanding Thai than Vietnamese, even though Thai is from a completely different language family, as both Thai and Khmer borrowed a lot of words from Sanskrit and Pali, and also from each other. The writing system of Khmer was adopted from the Palawa script, and from Khmer it was adopted by the surrounding languages. The Khmer script is an abugida, meaning that each symbol represents a consonant followed by a base vowel, and by adding a modifying symbol, you can change the vowel sound after the consonant. This modifier can be placed anywhere around the consonant symbol. Not only vowels have subscript versions, consonants have them too, and these are used to write consonant clusters. And there is also a full set of diacritics, symbols that can modify the sound even further. What is interesting about Khmer is that it has not only one, but two sets of consonants, a set with the base vowel A and a set with the base vowel O. For example, this is Ta and this is To. If you add a vowel modifier to these symbols, it would produce different results. In the first case, it will make ta sound, but in the second case, we'll get tie. Historically, this second set of consonants wasn't the same as the first one, but it corresponded to the voiced versions of the consonants that were present in the old Khmer. With time, the vocalization disappeared, and the difference between the consonants shifted to the vowel that comes after. That's why Khmer ended up with this complicated two-base system and even has the reputation of being the longest alphabet out there. In total, there are 16 dependent vowel symbols that are attached to consonants and that can produce an impressive variety of vowel sounds and diphthongs as, remember, they can combine with either A or O series consonants. But the most interesting thing about Khmer is not what it is, but what it's not. If we look at the region where Khmer is spoken, we can see that almost all of the languages are tonal. But suddenly Khmer is not. That of course is a big relief for someone who decides to venture into learning Khmer. But still, why doesn't Khmer have tones? Well, not all Austroasiatic languages have tones. And it seems that Proto-Austroasiatic did not have tones. So it's not like Khmer lost its tones, but it's that languages like Vietnamese later developed them. That being said, in the Phnom Penh dialect of Khmer, tones actually appeared. Khmer doesn't have tones, but it has the stress, which falls on the last syllable. And usually Khmer words consist of one or two syllables. Now it's time to listen to how Khmer actually sounds from the native speakers. <laughs> ក្រោបនឹងជំនួយសួរទូរទស្សនិកជនជាទីមេត្រីនៅវេលារុស្ស៊ីលថ្ងៃអង្គារទី <coughs> Khmer is an analytic language, meaning that the words don't inflect. There is no gender, number or cases, verbs don't have tense or moods. Because of that, the word order is fixed and it's SVO. Modifiers come after the word modified, like in this example, large dog, chkai tom, is literally dog large. Because there is no number, plural can be inferred by reduplication. So, dog large large, or large dogs, chai tom tom. But the same thing could also mean very large dog. Because there is virtually no grammar, it might look like the language is easy. But make no mistake, for an English speaker, it is still a very difficult language, with a very different intrinsic logic. You can also see in this sentence that since Khmer doesn't have inflections, it uses a lot of particles to, for example, indicate object, or intensify the meaning, or for anything really. Being polite is extremely important in Khmer culture, and that is reflected in the language. 
there are sometimes different words for the same thing depending on the social registers. For example, here are the five versions of the verb to eat, depending on who you're talking to or about. This complexity is also reflected in the pronouns, of which there are so many depending on the social status. That being said, pronouns are rarely used and you would rather address a person by their name or by a kinship term. Khmer also has its own native numerals, and the numbers 6 to 9 have the form of 5 plus 1, 5 plus 2, etc. In a Khmer text, you won't see spaces between words, but rather between sentence parts, something like commas in English. Western-style punctuation is common, but the traditional Khmer punctuation is also used. Khmer is a language with a rich history and traditions that can be retraced to the old Angkor Empire. It is definitely a very interesting language to learn, so if you are learning Khmer, tell me how your experience been. Thank you to my top tier patrons for picking Khmer, and you too can vote for the next language right here. Don't forget to press the like button to make the cat happy. Ah, thank you so much for watching and see you in our next exploration.